friends, hello and welcome back. Hope is having a lovely day. So today we're gonna go over my personal preferences on what I think is the best visual settings for on the ice in NHL 23. Now I know this is gonna be a preference thing for a lot, but I think there's also some importance to the selections you make because you do wanna put yourself in the best position to succeed and win hockey games and some settings can hurt you more than they help you. Um, auto zoom, uh, auto zoom is pretty much what that camera, camera automatically adjusts itself to show the best possible camera angle. Again, it's something I'm not a fan of. I don't like the angle. I don't like how it'll zoom in on the face off because it feels like you're not seeing the entire ice right away. So it's a little bit of a delayed reaction. So we'll turn that off. The camera angle we like to go with, which I believe it's default this year, unless it's taken years past settings is classic. Uh, just to bring it up real quick, overhead's a little further away. I feel like, I, and there's some really good players that prefer over it. Now, personally, I'm going to tell you right now, I got I have bad eyesight. And I need to be able to see as much ice as possible. When it gets to be even too small of ice, it gets to be strenuous. And it's like, eh, this is, I, I feel like I'm too far away. I'm playing with ants. So I like the classic. I think that's perfect because you want to be able to see... You want to see you want to see a little over a third of the ice, half the ice. Preferably when you're in a zone, you can see your defenders at the point. That's great. You don't want to be blinded and have to look at indicators and guess where they're at. So classic does a good job of show, showing that. Uh, just to go over a couple of things, dynamic. I highly recommend never using dynamic because dy what dynamic does it changes the camera angle and it'll not only change the angle like north and south, but it'll change it like east and west where you're like angled a little to the left angle to the right and all that does is in my opinion is it confuses you it makes passing difficult because what would normally be a pass directly to your right because of the way the camera angle is the guy's kind of angled directly a little bit above you to the right would really should just have to press to the right so it's kind of a lot there if you can handle it hey, you can handle it but again if you do do something like that you probably want dynamic high where you got some distance because you don't want to be again if you're too close feels good it's like ooh, i feel in first person but you have a hard time seeing the entire ice and you don't have that vision and ability to use the entire side of the ice you can camera perspective is on up the skater fatigue indicator i personally like to leave it on just because i kind of like to know if my guy's tired or not I'm, I'm hustling too much i need to back skate a little slow to get that energy back uh the player indicator size again can be a bit of a preference i wouldn't go anything over medium some people like small some take, people take it off i think it's important uh the setting controls the size of the indicator below the player oh that's the below the player one that one can actually be small if it has to be um, i was thinking of the one above the player the um the one in uh ward of shell that goes above the player kind of tells you well no that's that's this this year and now we want to go medium we're gonna go medium there uh the setting controls when a player indicator will appear when players are outside the field of view of the game camera um again i like this because it gives you an idea of where players are just in case you can't see them you can at least ballpark where to pass the puck so you should have that on goal anticipation indicator this setting uh controls whether the goal anticipation indicator and indicator is displayed when on the goalie anticipation indicator will be slow we are on we'll take that off because again it's good to have stuff on there to help you improve, but you don't want to have too much stuff going on on the ice. I feel like that was one thing we noticed in a beta this year. It's like if you have too much going on, it can be a bit of a distraction. The player name indicator uh, displays the player's name when in possession of the puck. Again, that's a preference. If you want it on, you want it on. If you don't, you don't. Uh, toggle indicator shift length. Uh, on default will result in shift length always being displayed in appropriate modes as part of the player's indicator again can have that off just a little bit of extra excess there if you want to kind of get an idea how long players should be on the ice and so forth that can't help or you can just I click on a d-pad and it'll show you how tired you guys are x-factor ability visuals on default will display all players x-factor abilities and states along with ability usage visualizations again i'll be honest the x-factors are cool this can be something that's too much noise for the most part like i'm gonna play my game whether my guy's got his x-factor or not some people might be different um, I tell you if the X factor is on or not, but for the most part, I'm gonna play the same way. And you know, you're usually gonna unlock those X factors, and you're gonna use players with the X factors that fit your ability and your style. So it's like you're not really changing the way you play because the guy's an X factor. It's just something that's an extra boost. So I don't think you need to have that on. Uh, player over uh, toggle position post goal. Overlays. Yeah, we'll leave that on because I think it's cool. Fighting instructions. Yeah, I mean, why not? We don't fight a lot anyway. The goalie camera. Again, I like classic. Because, and this is again a preference. I, I think it's classics great because you need to be able to see everything on the ice. You can see the passes coming, you can see the play developing a lot better. So that's a good position. Our defensive positioning is on a blue region that represents you want to turn that off again. That's just a bunch of noise. If you're brand new to the game and you really don't know what need where you know where you need to be, it can be helpful. I will say that, but for the most part, 
Um, if you know how to play defense or you're not really caring what EA has to say on how to teach you how to play defense, take that off. This is going to be a distraction, a puck highlight. I like medium. Again, uh, that, that's a vision thing for me personally. If you want to go small, go ahead. I, I need the puck to be a little bit bigger. I feel a little bit better with it. I, I felt I've learned that large feels kind of, I don't want to say laggy. It feels weird. It feels like you don't have a proper understanding of how far the puck is uh, it's, it may i don't know how to explain it. it feels weird it's one of those things i'd stick with medium uh, you want to do small you want to do small but i think it makes a difference you just you stick with what you want to stick with whatever you've used in the past you use now because it does as much as it's like oh it's the puck and you know you reach for it, you reach for it. it does give you a different idea of depth perception how far you away from things how far you have the puck everything else so do what you got to do there i like keeping the puck size normal i keep the score clock overlay on authentic if you don't like it down there you, you can always change it the shootout camera is dynamic low i don't have a problem with that because you got a close view of the goal you can slow it down and you're always at that shade strut so i do like the dynamic low but those are our visual settings hope you guys found this video helpful thank you guys for watching we'll see you next time